Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Library of Michigan's A Parade of Elephants webinar with Miss Jennifer Strauss. We're going to be getting started here today. I wanted to let you know that handouts are available um, at the bit.ly on your screen right now. And there is a survey for the end of the webinar. If you please could take about two minutes to fill that out, um, that'd be really helpful. Um, in our reporting back to LSTA as well as for our um, planning for next year. So um, I will also put those links right now in the chat box so that you can go directly to them today. So Ready to Read Michigan is an initiative uh, that the Library of Michigan uh, has started about 2018 um, it's based on the Every Child Ready to Read uh, five practices, talk, play, read, write, and sing. And uh, there's a book um, program component to Ready to Read Michigan. And today we're here to focus on that book. The Youth Services Advisory Council that serves the Library of Michigan chose A Parade of Elephants by Kevin Hankus to Today, we have Jennifer Strauss presenting on that. So I'm gonna invite Jennifer in here. There she is. And I wanna remind you all that if you go to the Library of Michigan's Youth Services webpage, you will find the programming guide. And some of the things Jennifer talks about today is from that programming guide. She's holding it up now. Um, some of it is from her own creation. So Jennifer, I'm gonna hand it over to you. All right, thanks, Kathy. Thank, Thank you so much for inviting me back to do another webinar. Um, this is the third out of three, yes, for um, Ready to Read books. We did. Oh, sorry, yes. Yeah. So it's it's your third Ready to Read webinar. Yep. So but really your happy. second one for this series this year. Right, second one for this series, <laughs> and there's one more to go. This is three yep. years running um, that I've had the honor to provide best story time practices webinars for Library of Michigan. And Kathy, thank you so much for bringing me in. I've had nothing but a great time doing these. So welcome, everyone. Um, we have an action-packed hour together. Um, if you've already received your materials in the mail, I'm assuming, so you've received your copy of this amazing and beautiful book called The Parade of Elephants, written by Kevin Henkes, and it's just a magical, lovely book for our zero to five population. Along with that, you should have received, um, as Kathy mentioned, your program and resource guide. Mine's a black and white copy, but the color copy is fabulous, and um, it is filled with all the ideas that you would need to do story time with infants, toddlers, and preschoolers, and also ignite your imagination so that you come up with other ideas that will blend well with this beautiful book. So you probably also got your stack of um, bookmarks, so hopefully those will be out in your libraries to lure people into the story time when you're going to be able to share this book, and then it'll get checked out many times after that. So beautiful book. I've had so much fun. As you can see, I've been wearing my elephant hat all day long today. So um, I'd like to start today um, by telling a story. And this is a personal story that reading this book helped me remember from a time when I was very young. So when we start talking about the five practices, you know that talking is one of the five practices and that it's quantity, not necessarily quality, that we need to share with those young ones in order to start developing their language and literacy skills. So storytelling as families and storytelling in the library about things that have happened to us in our lives and personal stories that hold memories is gonna ignite some of that imagination. So I'd like to start today before we get into the nitty gritty by sharing a story and I brought and it's not a real peanut because of peanut allergies, right? I had to go out and actually get a plastic peanut to share this story in schools, but I'd like to tell you this story. So it was in the middle of fourth grade, in the middle of the morning, in the middle of math. I was working on my problems when all of a sudden I happened to look up to the classroom door and saw my father standing there. This feeling of heat rushed through my body and I thought to myself, what did I do wrong? I thought I was in trouble. Well, my dad came and got me and took me out of the classroom. We walked down to the office and he signed me out of school and he wasn't saying a word and I still wondered if I was in trouble. 
We walked out into the parking lot and got into the car. And as I shut the door, I looked over at my dad and said, Dad, am I in trouble? He said, no, Jen, we're going to the circus today. Don't tell your mom. Well, that day we drove to downtown Detroit to a place called Kobo Arena. That's where the circus would come to town. And my dad had made deliveries to that building many times in his business. So he was in the habit of pulling up in the back of the building and walking through the back door. That day we were halfway down the hallway after entering the back door when the circus started to bring the elephants in. Now we were in the hallway and they were worried that we were gonna get hurt and I felt the hand of the elephant trainer push me into the girls' bathroom and shut the door while my father moved a little bit further down the hallway. Well, I was afraid that I would never see my dad again. I was afraid that they would never let me out of the girls' bathroom and I was crying and pounding on the doors when all of a sudden the door opened and there was the elephant trainer. He said, oh honey, I didn't mean to upset you. I just didn't want you to get hurt, now come on. And he grabbed me by the hand and took me into the room where all the elephants were standing in a circle. I had never been around an elephant before, the biggest animals that I had ever been close to. And the elephant trainer said, I want you to open your hands. And so I did. And he poured a mountain of peanuts into my hands and took me around to each elephant who reached down with those long trunks and grabbed a peanut out of my hand and fed themselves the peanut. Before the last elephant could take that last peanut, I said, oh no, I want to take this home and tell mom about it. Uh oh, well that day when I got home uh, at the end of the day, my mom asked me how my day was. And even though dad had told me not to, I told her that we had gone to the circus and I told her about everything that had happened. My mom told me it was a good story, but I suspect that after I went to bed that night, she and my dad had a long talk about taking me out of the school to go to the circus. But that elephant story came to mind when I started reading this book. So I wanted to share that with you. We have lots of stories and memories that we store in our brain and the amygdala, right? And we bring those memories up and we bring those feelings up every time we hear a new story. Depending on how much experience we've had with things, we bring more memory and we bring more emotion to the stories that we hear, even if we're in a story time at the library. So um, I wanted to share that story first before we got into a little bit more. Um, whenever I'm doing uh, the um, ready to read book. I always like to remind youth librarians and those working with our youngest populations in the libraries about the five practices and also like to remind you about the inside of a zero to five brain. So I want to talk a little bit about the fact that inside that zero to five brain there are nerve cells. Right. And I use the twisties to kind of represent a nerve cell, but I want to show you and then we're going to move to some slides here that in the brain of a child, zero to five, there are 100 billion nerve cells. Those nerve cells have a cable in the middle or an axon that messages zip up and down when the brain is activated. And on the end of those nerve cells, there are dendrites reaching out to connect with another nerve cell. Now, the only way that that connection is made is through experience. And we're going to talk a little bit about that, but I'm going to switch now from my, my um, fuzzy stick nerve cells to some slides that I'd like you to follow along with me. So let me share my screen with you. All right. All right, Cass, so it's not moving forward for me. You can try using your arrows on the keyboard. That's what I did. So let me okay. try this again. Let me do this. And then from beginning, there we go. All right, so here's an artist's representation of one of those nerve cells that I was talking about in the brain. And there's the axon or the cable where messages zip up and down and on the end, the branches or the dendrites, which at this age are reaching out to connect with another nerve cell dependent on experiences. This is the only two times I ever filled a PowerPoint slide with data, but you get to keep these slides, so I want you to have this. When a baby's born, they have 100 billion neurons at birth. Each of those has 10,000 dendrites, those branches reaching out and ready to connect with another nerve cell. Now, if those two nerve cells only connected 
one-to-one, -one, which isn't how the brain of a young one works. But if they were to connect just one-to-one, -one, that would be the possibility of one quadrillion possible configurations. But we know that that isn't how the brain works. Every single one of those dendrites has the possibility of connecting with another 10,000 dendrites. And it's very much like the keys of a piano, which are limited, but the amount of songs that can be produced on the keys of a piano are infinite. The number of connections that can happen in a child's brain are infinite. So a few more statistics before we move on. When a baby's born, only 17% of those neurons are wired at birth. We would call this the hard wiring or the things that we're born with, the things like breathing and digestion, the hard wiring. That means that 83% of that child's brain neuron wiring happens after birth, and we call that the soft wiring. What a child wires in their brain after birth at 83% is completely experience dependent. So let's talk about that a little bit. So neuroscientists have a saying. They say that the neurons that fire together are the ones that wire together. And in a child, zero to five, we are experiencing, or they are experiencing, a window of opportunity. Their brains are incredibly sensitive. Everything they're learning, they're wiring. And there is no filter at that point in our development that says, no, I don't want to hear this. No, I don't want to learn this. Because those dendrites are reaching out, then everything that they experience is going to wire around that experience. We call it a time of blossoming. But if that child doesn't get the experiences that they need, those nerve cells will not wire together and thus we call that a pruning sequence which means those neurons will wither away and not connect around an experience that maybe that child needed so we say that brain development zero to five is a blossoming window of opportunity and is totally experience dependent so what does that mean for us as early childhood educators that means that those five practices that every child ready to read has been talking about for a long time. And maybe you've heard them over and over again. I apologize, but they're really important. The five practices of talking, singing, reading, writing, and playing are essential for a child to have all the language experiences they need so that when they get a little bit older, they have the reading skills, the writing skills, and the skills to become a full and balanced human being. So what does that look like? That means that we are talking and running commentary to the little ones all the time. Scientists tell us that in order to be able to read and write proficiently by third grade, then that child before the age of five needs to hear 300,000 words. Now to some people that sounds like a lot and to others it doesn't sound like very much. But to give you some reference, if you read the book, The Cat and the Hat by Dr. Seuss, 18 times, you would have given a young person 300,000 words. And to us, that just doesn't sound like a lot. But we need to have that running commentary and conversation going on from the time that child is born all the way through. And it isn't so much the quality of the conversation as scientists say, it's more the quantity. So talking, singing, and music, and singing and music is important for language and literacy development because it teaches us the rhythm, it teaches us um, syllables, it teaches us the rhythm of language. So singing is another of the five practices. Reading, but not only reading lots with young ones, but talking about what we're reading. We'll exemplify that when we get into the book. Writing and pre-writing. So we know that, that eventually a child's going to learn the meaning of symbols and print on paper. But before they do, they need to have the motor skill function in order to be able to grab a crayon or a pencil and be able to write. So pre-reading might be stringing beads or playing in sand or working with clay or drawing a picture. So we have uh, to pay attention to those small motor skills. And then when they finally do, or they finally are able to understand those symbols of letters and that those letters have meaning on print, then the writing experiences will get more advanced. And finally, playing. Being able to play with props and puppets, being able to play with other children and adults, being able to role play in stories is all a part of the five practices. 
This last side is what we have to be very careful of, and we are the ones that are the role models for the parents and caregivers who come in with their little ones into the library. We need to caution them that too much screen time is not advantageous to the language and, and um, literacy development of their kids. Um, in fact, when a child is placed in front of the screen, they're mesmerized, and the part of the brain that activates is that emotion and memory center that we talked about a little earlier. So the emotion and memory brain parts are activated. The imagination or prefrontal cortex parts of the brain go quiet when a child's in front of a screen. Scientists have realized that even hours after the child is away from the screen, that imagination and visionary part of their brain is still quiet. So we need to make sure that parents are not putting their children in front of those screens as babysitters. So we're going to talk about some of the things that go on in story times. And I also have given you in your packets this story time planner. I do this in just about all of my handouts. So you have that with you. But let's go back and talk about what should be in a story time. I always begin with a welcome song. And that could be the same song all the time. It can be a seasonal welcome song or one that goes with the theme of the program that you're presenting that day. I introduce the theme or the topic in the story time. And then there's story number one, and you can either read a book that has to do with that theme or tell that story with participation. I usually include a second story that I either read or tell with participation. And then a song that's also theme-based, whatever your story time is about that day. And it can be a song that is an active song that gets the wiggles out at the same time. Um, the third story, I usually make sure that is acting and playing in story or song. So there's lots of participation and joining in. That can be a song, a finger play, a rhyme, or something on the felt board. And then finally, a closing song can be the same each week to welcome them back to the next story time, or it could be seasonal song that you close with, or a theme-based song that you close with. It's really up to you. I like the idea of having them welcomed into the story time and say goodbye to them each time in the same way so that they have that consistency as bookends for your story time. And then finally, a writing activity related to your theme that's age appropriate for writing readiness. So that's sort of a, a, a kind of a, um, a general list of what might be in your story time. And then a, finally, um, that story time planner that'll help you remember the five practices every time you plan a story time. So let's get busy, shall we? And I'm going to, uh, I'll come back to the slides at the end to show you a few more, but I'm going to come back and be with you now. So let's get busy, shall we? This is an amazing book and I had so much fun. As I said, I've had this hat on all day long. So um, to get in the mood of things, it's just been so much fun. So I'd like to start the story time um, today with a welcome song. Uh, the words to this are in your packet. There's lots of ways of adapting this one. This has become my welcome song this year. Last year it was happy and you know it and I adapted that in a bunch of different ways. This year, I like this one the more we get together. Now, I'm really big about um, adding motions because when we add something that we do with our body and we use that with language, it's gonna solidify deeper into a young one's brain. So we're gonna learn some sign language to go with this and then I'll show you how to adapt it to become the closing song and also to uh, get your, um, your patrons to give you ideas for how to continue the song, right? So sign language, this is more. Do it with me because if you do it with me, you know that it's going to stick in your head better too. Repetition is our friend. All right. So more together. You're going to take your two fists and put them together and make a big circle with that together. Happy. And B. So it looks like a flag with your thumb tucked in B. Okay. So the more we get together, the happier we'll be your friends, hook your fingers together for friends, are my friends, my friends are your friends. The more we get together, the happier we'll be. We'll try this one verse and then I'll, um, I'll explain how you can adapt it with lots of other ways. Okay, so the more we get together, 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 the more we get together, the happier we'll be, cause your friends are my friends, and my friends 
are your friends. The more we get together, the happier we'll be. Lots of adaptations, right? The more we sing together, the more we play together, the more we eat together, the more we read together, the more we think together. So I always offer this up and especially to preschoolers to say, what else do we do together? What else do we do together? And they can give you those. You may not know the sign language for them if they offer those up and that's okay, but you can sing their offering in the song. You can sing, the more we eat together, 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 the more we eat together, the happier we'll be. So I love that welcome song and I hope you'll use it. Maybe you already are, but extend it by thinking about all the other things that we do together. Okay, so welcome song. The very first book that I would like to share in this story time is our featured book, The Parade of Elephants. I got possessed by this book. <laughs> it's just absolutely magical. It's called The Parade of Elephants and it was written by Kevin Hankis. But before we read this book, I wanna share with you a few things about elephants that I want you to keep in mind. So in your packet, you guys, there's a whole list of elephants, right? And if you want to talk about the difference between fact and fiction, especially starting with those preschoolers who are a little bit more ready to understand that concept, then we can share some elephant facts before we get started. Now there's lots of them in this handout, but I'm gonna read a few that might be appropriate for our zero to fivers, all right? Elephants, when they're together and marching, it's actually called a parade. So when elephants are marching together in a line, it's called a parade. That's the scientific word for it. Elephants love bananas. Elephants love water and swimming. Elephants are so clever that they can peel a banana or a piece of corn and lots of other food with their trunks. Elephants are very emotional. They cry when they're sad and they squeak or trumpet with their trunks when they're feeling happy. Elephants have good memories. Elephants are so clever, they even play jokes on people. So you can start with some facts about elephants that are true before reading the book. So I hope you'll use those. You ready to read? So I'm gonna read this through, but I'm also keeping in mind that we may be in front of infants who are on the laps of their caregivers, we may be reading this book to toddlers who are a little bit older, or we may be reading this book to preschoolers. And in those three audience, you know that the interaction is going to be a little bit different. So with those little baby infants on the laps of their caregivers, it's more directing the caregivers for how to interact with them while going through the story. So the action words, that caregiver is going to be using arms and legs to do some action. You're going to want to remind them to look right into the eyes of that infant while they're interacting with any part of this book, all right? For our toddlers, they might still be in the laps of a caregiver or a parent. Some of them might be comfortable sitting on the floor and certain toddlers are gonna to be able to engage a whole lot more than others. So we will um, bring them in in whatever way that they're ready. And then finally, those preschoolers are gonna be ready to do a lot more. So I'm gonna read with all of those things in mind, all right? A Parade of Elephants by Kevin Hankis. Look at all the elephants. And they're all different colors, aren't they? Oh, the inside of the book is even magical. Even before we get into the book, I see, I see the sun. Do you see the sun? And what else do we see on this page? Yeah, they're butterflies. Let's count the butterflies and see how many there are. Here's a little one to start with. One, two, three, four, five butterflies. Hmm, I wonder if they're gonna show up later in the book. We'll have to watch for them. A parade of elephants. Oh, there's some stars. There's some stars on the dedication page. Hmm. And so our story begins. This is exciting. Look, elephants. I know you're excited, Jen, but we're going to have to have you scooch back a little bit because we can't okay. read the full book. Thank you. Perfect. Hey, right hey. there. 
Thanks. All right. oh, it looks like we're going to count these elephants on this page. So let's go to the top line. And not only are we going to count them, we're going to ask ourselves, what color are those elephants? So let's count the very top line. Ready? One. And what color is that elephant? That one elephant is blue. I'm going to teach you some sign language for blue. Can you hold your hand up and tuck your thumb in and we're going to wave? That's blue. So we have one blue elephant. Let's go to the second line. Let's count them. One, two. This says two. Two elephants. And this one's a different color. What color is that? Yep, that's yellow. So let me show you how to do yellow. You're going to make a Y with your thumb and your pinky, and you're going to shake that Y for yellow. So we have one, two elephants. One of them's yellow, one of them's blue. Let's go to the third line and count the elephants. You ready? One, two, three. Three elephants. And here's a new color. What color is that? That's a pink elephant. So you're going to take your these two fingers, you're going to put your one finger straight up in the air and these two fingers like a birdie's beak and put it on your cheek, right? So a pink elephant, yellow elephant, and a blue elephant. And there's one, two, three. Let's go to the next line. One, two, three, four. Four elephants. This says four. And what color is our newest elephant? Yep, he's green, yep. And then finally on the bottom, let's count him. Look, there's a baby. He's smaller than all the other ones. One, two, three, four, five elephants, five elephants. And the baby elephant is pink too, but just a little lighter. So we have a pink elephant and a green one. We have another pink elephant that's bigger and we have a yellow elephant and a blue elephant. Good counting, everybody. Nice job. Five elephants. One, two, three, four, five. And what's the baby doing? That baby elephant has his trunk wrapped around the next elephant's tail. He's holding on so he doesn't get left behind. Yep. Five elephants, you know what they're doing? They're marching. Can you see their legs up? They're marching. Marching is when we use our legs more definitely when we're walking. It's kind of a different kind of walking. Right where you're sitting, can you march your legs? Let's do some marching. Some of them might stand up to march. You know they always do that, right? So we're going to do some marching. You get used to that? Infants and caregivers, they might be using their legs to do a marching motion, right? It's a parade of elephants. Do you remember earlier when I said that a group of elephants in a line was called a parade? Well, there it is, a parade of elephants. And I want you to look closely at this picture. What came into this picture that we've already seen? Can you look? Yeah, the butterflies are back. Let's take a look and see how many there are. One, two, three, four. Oh, there's five butterflies and they are the same color as the elephants. Where's the tiniest butterfly? Yeah, right over here, isn't it? And it's pink. And there's a blue butterfly, a yellow butterfly, another pink one, and a green butterfly. Now let's look at this picture because there's something very special about elephants. Their noses are called trunks and they're long and kind of floppy. In this picture, some of the elephants have their trunks down and some of them have their trunks up. Can you point to the elephants that have their trunks up? Yeah, the green one has his trunk up. Mm -hmm. So does the yellow one <gasps> and the blue one. Let's put our trunks up. Yeah, elephants can move their trunks up and they can move them down. This page says big and round and round they are. Look how big and round the elephants are. They're really big animals. Big 
and round and round they go. They're marching around and around. They're marching in a shape. Does anybody know what that's called? They're marching in a circle. Ah, look what they're doing now. <laughs> look at what those silly elephants are doing. Can you think about what they're doing? What are they doing in this picture? Climbing, yeah. Climbing a sand dune, yeah. They're going up hills, aren't they? Up, down. They're going up and down, up and down the hills. They're marching up and down the hills. Not only are they going up and down, they're going over, under. Let's see what they're going over. Here's all the elephants. And it looks like they're going over, what does this look like? Look like the lake, yep, river. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're going over the water. What are they marching over the water on? Does anybody have any ideas out there about what that is? Hills, yeah. A roller coaster, yeah, it kind of looks like that, doesn't it? Yeah. A bridge, maybe it's a bridge. They are going over and they're going under. So look at all the elephants on the bottom of the page. What do you think they're going under? They're going under something. So there's something above them. Umbrellas, yep, kind of looks like umbrellas, yeah. Yeah, trees, trees. They're going under the trees, good job. Not only are they going over and under, but this says in, out. Let's see where the elephants are going in and where they're coming out. Does anybody have any idea what that is? Going through um, on the playground, yeah. A hill, yep. Oh yeah, that might be a cave. You're right, that might be a cave. So those elephants are going in and then they're coming out. They're going in and they're coming out. Now four, I'm going to stop out of here for infants and toddlers. And I'm going to set the book down here for a minute to talk about this. To kind of reiterate those directional things that are coming out of the story, it could be that the caregiver looks directly at that infant and for in, they might have their hands in front of their face and go closer to them, in and out, in and out and out so that we can emphasize those directional word, words, under and over. They're going under and over, right? They're going up and down, up and down. So a little peekaboo game with those directional words will help those infants and toddlers too. They march and they march. Oh my goodness. And they march. They're doing a lot of marching, aren't they? What do you notice about the elephants in this picture that we haven't seen before? Yeah, they're holding on to each other's tails, aren't they? Every single elephant is holding on to another elephant's tail. Isn't that sweet? They're together in a parade and they're marching. They march all day. So here they're marching in this direction and all those elephants are marching back. They're marching in this direction. Let's do some marching with our feet. And they marched and they marched all day. And when the day is done, how can you tell in this picture that the day might be over? What do you see that we haven't seen yet? Anything in there? Yeah, we're seeing their rear ends, aren't we? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, look, the sun's gone and now the moon has come up. And so the day is coming to a close. And when the day is done, they are done too. Are they marching now? 
No, they're standing still, aren't they? And look at these two elephants, the yellow one and the blue one. What do you think they're doing? Kissing. <laughs> and they're touching, maybe shaking trunks or saying good night. Yeah. They yawn. Can we do some yawning? <gasps> Ooh. And stretch. Let's give a big stretch. Oh, it feels really good. They stretch. Okay, let's do that first. And they yawn. Oh, what do you think they're getting ready to do? Go to sleep. Yeah, I'm getting tired too. But before they sleep, uh-oh, they're going to do something before they sleep. Oh, look, their trunks are all up in the air. They lift their trunks. You see their trunks all sticking up in the air? Put your trunk up. Yeah. And they trumpet. That's the sound that an elephant makes. <laughs> Let's try and make that. What do you think an elephant sounds like? Yeah, well, those are really good sounds. I'm going to try and make an elephant sound. <coughs> do you want to try that with me? You put your lips together real tight. Get your trunks ready. <coughs> we sound like a big group, a parade of elephants. You know what happened when they trumpeted? They trumpet scattering stars across the sky. So they trumpeted and they scattered stars across the sky. Those are some magical elephants. Good night. And what are our elephants doing now? They're all sleeping, but look what they scattered across the sky. They scattered stars. And that's our story. Isn't that magical? I just love this book. So I was trying to exemplify all the different age groups and what we might bring out and also to exemplify how we talk about what we're reading and enlist their reactions and our accepting of all the language that they give back in terms of what they're seeing because they're using their own memory and their own emotions and their own experience base to come to this story. Some of those little ones may have never heard of elephants before or seen one. So this could be a brand new concept. So it's an amazing book. You can go back through, right? And just focus on all the action words and do those. You can go back through and read it again and just focus on the directional words. You can go back through and count and do those colors. So this book lends itself to lots of different themes. So on your outline, I kind of listed some of the themes that might be your story time theme. Elephants or favorite animals, action words, the vocabulary in that story that might be new, like scattering, right? Um, counting, opposites, directional words, colors, the circus, and stars. And in your program guide, there's a number of um, lists of resources about books that are appropriate for every age according to those themes. So you'll see lots of great resources there. So I want to um, then now go on to the next part of this story time, which be, would be a song. And all of this is in your packet, you guys. So all the words to this is, are in your packet. And this song is just perfect for this theme. I'm going to do it in three different ways. One way that you could share with infants, one way that you could share with toddlers, and then a third way that you can share this with your preschoolers who are a little bit more mobile and also a little bit more able to participate in a different way. So in um, your packet, I have given you a handout for finger puppets, right? And um, in the packet, it's a different elephant. They're a little bit bigger, but they don't go along with the elephants in our book. And I was trying to stay consistent with all of these. So um, this is um, for infants and, and sitting on the laps of their caregivers and their parents, right? And so these would be given to or made by the parent or the caregiver. You can have these ready to go ahead of time, or this can be the first thing they do when they get there is to make their finger play. So that's a part of the story time and they, they are ready to participate with you, right? I put them all into a little case. These are Eltoid um, box, right? 
I have a zillion of these because my sister's addicted to them. So she sends me the boxes for things like this. So I put them in that little box, which can be something you do as a craft to make these finger puppets and have a box for families to take home and be able to sing this song and tell the story again. Um, if you don't use Altoids, this is a box that was left over after I had purchased paper clips. So any kind of box, but it's a wonderful way to take this home. All right, so there's lots of different versions of this. We're gonna do the spider web version here in a minute. I like this version because it goes along with the story that we just read, right? So one little elephant went out to play, marching up a hill one day. He had such enormous fun. He called for another elephant to come. And then we're all gonna say, hey, elephant, ready? Hey, elephant, two little elephants went out to play, marching up a hill one day. They had such enormous fun, they called for another elephant to come. Hey, elephant, three little elephants went out to play, marching up a hill one day. They had such enormous fun, they called for another elephant to come. Hey, elephant, four little elephants went out to play, marching up a hill one day. And then you get to the fifth one. Five little elephants went out to play, marching up a hill one day. They had such enormous fun, but they got tired and rolled back down. So for the infants on um, laps of caregivers and parents, this can be in their hand, and they can do it in front of that baby's face like this. So facing the child who's on their lap, not the way I showed you, but I wanted you to see this, right? So finger play is one way to do this, right? So the second way is with um, toddlers. It's great to use other visuals for them. And so this is a felt board. And um, I have the version that you most likely have heard before, which is one little elephant went out to play upon a spider's web one day, right? He had such enormous fun, called for another elephant to come. When the fifth elephant gets on the spider's web, the spider web broke and they fell down. Aww. Poor elephants. So I made a spider's web, right, out of felt. I left it cracked or broken already. And so you'd sing the song with them. One little elephant went out to play upon a spider's web one day, had enormous fun, called another one to come. Hey, elephant! Until all five of the elephants are on the spider's web, right? And then when the fifth elephant came out to play, they had such enormous fun, but the, the spider web broke and they fell down. Probably can't see this now, right? <laughs> Aw, poor elephants. So the felt board is a wonderful way to engage those toddlers, right? And Kathy, I think you wanted to talk about the fact that in the kits, there are patterns and templates for your own felt board activities to go along with a parade of elephants. And you can have those up so that they can tell the story, tell it in a new way. Kath, do you want to talk about those at all? Sure. Um, in the library's box kits, there are, um, I believe you can see on your screen right now, the uh, flannel board cutouts that you can use um, to do what Jen just demonstrate, to retell the story, um, to, um, you know, make up your own flannel story. So those are available in your boxed kit. They're beautiful. And yeah. I didn't see those ahead of time, but now you have another idea, right? So it's yep. not bad to have more ideas for all of this, right? So thank you. All right, wonderful. So when we get into those preschoolers, you know, they're a little bit more active. Oh, I wanted to show you this too. Oh my goodness, I forgot. So for the toddlers and their caregivers and the infants and their caregivers, at Michael's, they sell packages, or you can order these too online, packages of eyeballs, okay, that fit around, I know it's the middle finger, but we're not going there, right? So it fits around the middle finger. Check out the elephant. Check out the elephant. One little elephant went out to play, 
I'm marching up a hill one day. He had such enormous fun. So for those little ones on laps, it's a great visual and you can make an elephant and here's the trunk and you can trumpet. So it's another wonderful way to engage those little ones by just using those eyeballs. So I wanted to show you that. So preschoolers with this song, of course, we can get right into the action of it all. So I brought a ball of yarn to make the spider's web. And if you have your preschoolers sit in a circle, one way that you can begin this song is by counting, which we've already done in the book, right? So one preschooler would hold on to the end and you'd bring the ball of yarn over to another person sitting across the circle who would grab a hold of a piece of string and make sure that they're holding on, right? Because if they let go, this isn't going to work. And you know they're going to let go, right? You know how this all goes. But we need to instruct, right? So bring that string over to the next person across. And so everybody has a piece of that spider web, and they've counted up to how many elephants are in the room that day. So they're now elephants, right? And then you lay that spider web down on the floor, and you have those preschoolers take two little scooches back so they can see the spider web in front of them. Right. So one way to create that spider web, of course, you could tape it down on the floor with masking tape might be a little easier than this, but this is good motor skill. But you could tape that spider web with masking tape on the floor of your library and they can sit in a circle around it. Okay, so then you can sing that song, right? And one little elephant went out to play, but they get up and try and balance on one of the pieces of the spider web. So they're out there balancing. They call another, hey, elephant. And you can bring as many children as you want into that spider web, balancing and helping each other balance. And then um, the spider web breaks and they fall down. But in your um, handout, I created a final verse for this song that was based on the book, The Parade of Elephants. And it goes like, like this. The elephants marched till they got tired. They lifted their trunks, and we're going to trumpet, and scattered the stars. They yawned and stretched and rubbed their peeps, and they lay down to go to sleep. So I came up with a new verse based on this book so that those that vocabulary and those terms can be heard again in a song which solidifies that language experience with them. So check that out in your hand handouts. There's another verse to that song. I also got busy in my office making marching hats. Now they can make these when they come in. You can have the, the hoops already connected. And then the elephants, they haven't even seen the book yet, but they're gonna pick the color that they like. And with a glue dot or some tape, they're gonna glue it on to their band and put their elephant hat on as they come and are welcomed into the story time circle. So that becomes their marching hat when they come out to, to um, practice that song. The other versions of that song are in your packet. I like the one that they're marching up the hill and then back down again. And if you have any manipulatives in your library, like little wooden bridges or chairs that they can march up and over safely, right? Then it would be wonderful to set two chairs up and they have to march up and then down again, or go in and go out or go over and go under while you're singing, because that will also reinforce the words that are in that, in that story. So I hope that'll help you. So the second story I'd like to share with you is a story that I told for years. And what's so funny about this story is I've adapted it to so many different audiences. You know how you do. You have a story and you're going to adapt it for another story time theme or another seasonal story. But the wonderful thing about this that we all know is that repetition is necessary. So we take a familiar story. We tell it in a new way. They already have knowledge of that story that they can bring forward, but you're telling it in a new way to build their language and literacy development by telling it in a new way. So I took paint sticks and I took some of the templates from the resource book and I created these two elephants, right? And I'm going to tell a story about this elephant whose name is Ed and this elephant whose name is Elmer. One morning, Ed the elephant woke up. It was a beautiful day and he raised his trunk and he let out a trumpet. Let's try that. Now, Ed thought it was such a beautiful day that he wanted to go over the hill and through the cave to visit his best friend, Elmer. So on that day, Ed marched up the hill and down the hill. He went into the cave and he came back out of the cave. You can even add the bridge and the trees, right? He went over the bridge 
and under the trees until he got to Elmer's house. Now, when he got to Elmer's house, he knocked on the door with his trunk. Bang, bang, bang. He opened the door. He looked in and Ed looked around and around and around, but there was a problem. His friend Elmer wasn't, wasn't home. So Ed had to go back home. He pulled his head out, he shut the door, and he went over the bridge, under the trees, into the cave and out again. He marched up the hill and back down until he got home. And when he got home, he went to sleep. The next day, over on the other side of the jungle, Elmer woke up. Elmer thought it was a beautiful day, so he lifted his nose, his trunk, and he trumpeted. <laughs> and he decided it was a perfect day to go visit his best friend, Ed. On that day, Elmer left home and he marched over the bridge, under the trees, into the cave, out of the cave. He marched up the hill and back down again until he came to Ed's house. Now, when he got to Ed's house, he knocked on the door with his trunk. Bang, bang, bang. He opened the door. He put his head inside and he looked around and around and around, but there was a problem. His friend Ed wasn't home. So Elmer pulled his head out and he shut the door and he marched up the hill and down the other side. He went back into the cave and came out the other side. He hiked under the trees and over the bridge until he got home. And when Elmer got home, he went to sleep. On the third day, those two elephants woke up. They thought it was a beautiful day. They raised their trunks and they trumpeted. <laughs> that day, both elephants headed to meet each other. They wanted to go visit their best friend. And so when Ed left, he went up and over the hill. But when Elmer left, he went over the bridge, under the trees. He went into the cave and came out. And just as he was marching up the hill, he ran into his best friend, Ed. They spent the whole day together. They talked and they played. They marched and they marched until the end of the day. They knew it was time to go back home. So they touched trunks and they said goodbye. And so Elmer and Ed left by marching back down the hill. Elmer had to go through the into the cave and out again. He had to go underneath the trees and over the bridge. But when they got home, they went to sleep. But those two elephants were always happy because on any day they knew that on the other side of the jungle, they had a friend that they could play with and march with. And that's the story of Ed and Elmer. So I took that from a story that I learned when I was in second grade in our music block book. It was Mr. Brown and Mr. Black who went to visit each other. That story has turned into snakes, worms, dragons, depending on what I've needed over the years. So now with this, you can use the templates, a couple of paint sticks, and you can have the story of Ed and Elmer Elephant who go visit each other and using the vocabulary from the book, all those directional words, right? So you can try that, try that story out. All right, so we're gonna go to another song story, an action story, and this one is also in your resource guide. I changed the words a little bit, sorry, Kath. It came up with some other rhyming words that I liked a little bit better, um, but it's called The Elephants Go Marching. Now we're with infants, toddlers, and also with preschoolers, so we need to have a way for all of them to interact and adapt it for those specific age groups. These come in really handy for this story too. So the song goes, the elephants go marching one by one, right? So for those infants and the caregivers on laps, we're gonna use fingers, or we can use those finger plays, again, the ones that we used earlier. The elephants go marching one by one, hurrah, hurrah. The elephants go marching one by one, hurrah, hurrah. The elephants go marching one by one. They call for another to have some fun. And they all go marching around and around and around they go. Now for the little ones, they might be in laps. Toddlers might be ready to get up and start marching. So if you still have the spider web or a circle or a circle rug, those little ones can get up and be the one on one and start marching in a circle. But then we move on with the verses. The elephants go marching two by two, hurrah. Hurrah, elephants go marching two by two, hurrah, 
hurrah, elephants go marching two by two. I gotta see what I put down here. Oh yeah, one is green and the other blue. And they all go marching around and around and around they go. So if they have their hats on, those preschoolers can be up marching and now you have two. Elephants go marching three by three, hurrah, hurrah. Elephants go marching three by three, hurrah. Hurrah, elephants go marching three by three. They dance together around a tree and they all go marching around and around. Elephants go marching four by four, hurrah, hurrah. Elephants go marching four by four, hurrah, hurrah. Elephants go marching four by four. The little one stops to add one more and they all go marching around. So by five by five, Elephants go marching five by five, hurrah, hurrah. Elephants go marching five by five, hurrah, hurrah. Elephants go marching five by five, they find some water and in they dive. Last part, they all go swimming around and around and around they go. So infants on laps, these can be used for one by one, two by two. Um, toddlers. You can use these one by one and have a bunch of these, two by two, three by three. They can hold them, right? They can interact with them. So another way to do that. And then with those preschoolers up with their headbands on and marching in a circle, one, and then two, three, four, and five. And then they dive into the middle and go swimming. Okay, so changing it up just a little bit for that. Okay, so I hope that's another one that you'll love using. So the last song, and yeah, we're getting there. We always have too much, right? Always, always, always. The last song I wanna share with you before we end our story time and then talk about a few other craft items that I've made to show you, some that have come out of the um, guidebook and others that have not. So um, this is a song that I've been singing forever. In fact, last year when we had space as a theme, um, I did this song, also did it with our, our Ready to Read book last year too. So I've adapted it again to this book. So I've changed the words. They may have sung it with you before. You may have heard me sing it before, but I'm gonna sing it with you this time to go along with the Parade of Elephants, this book. So we stay theme related, right? So the stars at night, they twinkle their light. We're gonna use the words from the book, Stat scattered across the sky. So let's try that, Twinkly's up here. The stars at night, they twinkle their light. We're gonna scatter the stars, scattered across the sky. The moon at night, it shines down bright, right? Shines down right before we shut our eyes. So let's do that part. The moon at night, it shines down bright before we shut our eyes. The elephants, and I'm making a trunk with both of my arms together. The elephants, they sleep at night. They marched and marched all day. So the elephants, they sleep at night. They marched and marched all day. End of it. Stars twinkle their light. Moon shines down bright. Elephants, trunks again, sleep at night. Oh my. So let me put that all together for you, okay? The stars at night, they twinkle their light scattered across the sky. The moon at night, it shines down bright before we shut our eyes. The elephants, trunks out here, they sleep at night. They marched and marched all day. Oh, twinkle their light. Moon shines down bright. Elephants sleep at night. Oh my. So a song that you've heard before if you've been with me, one that I've done before, but I'm big on repetition and I'm big on adaptation. So if you like that, um, you can use that again in this story time. So we would thank our guests for coming to the story time and we always end by welcoming them back next time. I like to use the same tune that I started with, but a little bit of different words. The sign language goes along with it the way that it did in the beginning. It's time for us to go now, go now.
go now. It's time for us to go now. I'll see you next time. I'll do it again. It's time for us to go now. Go now. Go now. Time for us to go now. I'll see you next time. So closing song. All right. So two stories, a few songs, lots of action, some props, some felt board, and um, use that in any way that you want. So let me show you some other things for the writing part that I discovered in the resource, the program resource kit, but also some things on my own. I thought for the marching, it would be really fun for everybody to go home with a band with one of those elephants from the book on their head, and then they can just keep on marching and singing their songs when they get home. So I added that. That's not in the program guide. Um, Jen, I can even. Game? I can even uh, see adding like a trunk. That would that be so happen. cool. As yeah. long as it didn't block their, you know, block couple, their view. I thought about eyes. the visors with the trunk hanging off of it too, and they can use their paper bag template for that. Yeah. So in your um, in your packets are these beautiful pictures of elephants that you can reproduce on tag board. You can blow them up bigger if you want to, and and then cut those out again with one of the L colored boxes. I just made the matching game that's described in your resource program guide. So doubles of each one of the elephants. And you can use those by sending them home to do the matching game, have a quiet table afterwards that they sit down at, or handing them out to all your participants. And they have to find the same color elephant that they have, right? So participating in group collaboration is another way. It's really wonderful to use that matching game. I made the um, paper bag elephant puppets because they were awesome. So let me show you what I did with these. I mean, paper bags, we've been using those for ages, right? Um, and there's a pattern in your resource guide that has the trunk and the ears that you can copy onto anything and they may cut those out and you provide the paper bags, right? But I looked at all the colors of the elephants in the book and I decided to make copies of those patterns for every color of elephant that was in the book. So they could choose their colored elephant and cut that one out. So here's the baby, the pink one, the little baby elephant. And so the trunk goes here, right? And the ears here. I found at Michael's a roll of 3,000 eye stickers for about $5, $4.99, right? So the eye stickers, and then they're all different. So their elephants can be different. They can pick the eyes they want, even two different eyes if they want. And then I went and grabbed some of those office stars, right? So that they can have the stars on their trunks. And if they want to scatter the stars, they can trumpet. <laughs> Sorry, that one didn't come out like and they can scatter those stars, but they're on their noses. So we can reinforce that book this way. So isn't that adorable? I was so geeked by the paper bag puppet. Doesn't take much, <laughs> you guys. All right. So stars, stickers for eyes, um, the pattern from your resource book for that one. And then one last one. I know we're going over that. One last one. There is a page in your resource book. And this, of course, mine's not colored. Um, and you can use any of the templates that you want. But it's this page where all those elephants were marching out and then back and out and then back, but they're colored. So I took several of those pages and I cut them up, right, into little pieces because these elephants are going in different directions and they are all those colors. And I put them in one of the tins and there's a lot of different things that, that little ones can do with that. They can create a pattern, they can make a parade, they can send them <laughs> marching off into their bedroom and out into the living room. So it's a really wonderful way to interact by having little manipulative pieces that are elephants that they can do a number of things with. I love patterns and you could even have the pattern already there, like green, green, blue, blue, yellow, yellow, pink, pink, and have them line those elephants up underneath that pattern. Or they can create their own story with all those elephants, put them in a herd, have them go marching, whatever they want to do, go under and over. So it's another wonderful thing to send them home with so they can continue the language and literacy activities at home as a family, right? So your packet has incredible things in it, right? For writing ideas, I had this all laid out. Now that I'm rushing, it's not all laid out. Okay, wait a minute. I can bring it up on the screen here. Um, this so the, um, the, the packet has, and I had, let me see what I did with these, you guys, I'm sorry. Here they are. Okay. So things that can extend the writing experience for them, right? So one of the things that's in the packet is 
having those elephants and counting them. But not only that, they could do the colors as well, right? They could name them if they wanted to, but counting them and putting those numbers here or deciding what color they are and trying to make that color or just verbalize that color. That's a wonderful one. There's a template for the elephant that they can trace, right? Or they can, and they can color that elephant. You can make a parade in your library. They can put their name on that elephant and you put them up in your library. So there's a parade with all the story time names on that, that parade of elephants, right? There's pages for um, families and toddlers and preschoolers to interact with that pre-writing by drawing a picture. This says a time that I went in and out of something, a favorite action from the book. So they draw those pictures and if they're preschoolers and they have those symbols, those letters of print on paper, they can start making those words and if not, they can draw those pictures because we know that's writing too, right? So lots of wonderful ideas in that resource packet for all of these things. So I hope you'll use all these ideas um, and I thank you for attending this webinar today and hope that you got some ideas that you're gonna take and have fun with with this book because it's absolutely fabulous. Thank you, Jen. And everyone stay on here for a minute. I have got a few sneak peeks for you. Oh, cool. Um, and, but before I, I, I share those, Jen, we just, I just want to thank you so much for always thinking of great ideas and highlighting um, some of the programming guide as well. You really bet. appreciate it. Bet. I enjoy it so much. So thank you for having me be a part of it. If there's suggestions, yeah. Um, please do the survey. Kathy shares all of that with yeah. me, and so I can keep making these better, right? So um, keep making keep making those suggestions so that I know what you need, and hopefully it's what you need, right? And go right. find these, right? <laughs> the greatest little elephant. All right. I think everybody wishes that their dad had picked them up and taken them to the circus oh, to the, one day. The, my dad How is really sweet. Cool. Yeah. All, right. <laughs> All right. Well, real quick, I just want to show everyone, of course, the programming guide is found on our website. I've been putting links in our chat box during the webinar today. Um, and so it's full of really great things. Megan Shedd at MSU, um, really helps me to um, to write this programming guide. It's fantastic. And sneak peek everyone, we're getting a new website. So ready to read mi.org is going to be the new website for public library staff to go to for training. So you'll be able to access the programming guide here. There's also going to be this webinar and others that are up on here, our newsletters, support and contact information. But what I wanted to show you is read, talk, play, sing, and write. Awesome. Now, I haven't been able to fully work on this just because work is crazy. Um, but for the most part, these are complete. There's just some images and links that need to be updated. So if you go into play, for example, there's going to be activities and printables. Some of them are going to pull from our um, programming guide and some are going to be links out into the great wide web. Lots of resources under play and then of course books and see here's some of the editing I need to do is my sizes. <laughs> um, so that's available for all five practices. So I'm really excited to share that today, kind of a sneak peek to everyone. Cool. Also, um, Kevin Hankus has agreed to come to Michigan and he will be at the Library of Michigan on March 4th at 10 a.m. Uh, I'm inviting library staff to come attend if you're free that day to drive to Lansing. <laughs> uh, reach out to me for details. And um, we're also going to be recording Kevin uh, reading the story. And that recording, it'll be very, I don't want to promise anything, but I think it's going to be pretty similar to um, reading rainbow style. And that recording link will go to public libraries to share in their story time so that Kevin will be reading directly to your audiences. So I'm really excited. Um, to share that news today. Um, Kevin will be here March 4th to do all of that. So I 
will be sending out more information to the listservs, but I can't go without acknowledging our funders. So the Institute of Museum and Library Services, the Consumers Energy Foundation, as well as the Library of Michigan Foundation make all of this possible. Um, having Jennifer, having Kevin, having your programming kits is all made possible through those funders. So thank you very much, everyone. And Jen, thank you so much for sharing all your great knowledge with us today. You are welcome. There was a question in the chat box about the oh. color green. Oh, yeah. Oh, you know what? That's on my list of notes. Thank you, Mindy. Um, so it's thumb or, and finger together and you shake it like this. And you know that YouTube would show you all this sign language. <laughs> yeah. So do it again for us because okay. I had my shirt. So, okay. So um, uh, green. Stand back a little bit. Oh, okay. There you go. It's thumb and finger together shaking it. Blue is a flag with your thumb tucked in. Pink is like a birdie's nose with your first finger up on your cheek. Pink, blue. Um, yellow is the letter Y with your thumb and baby finger out and you shake it, right? So there's two pink elephants. You know, you can go little pink, <laughs> right? So pink, green, blue, yellow, right? Okay. All, All right. right. Thanks, Thank everybody. Thank you, Jen. Yep. Thank you, everyone. Please do make sure you fill out the survey for us. Please. And take advantage of that programming guide and Jen's handouts. Have a good day.